Welcome in the next episode of Founders Kitchen Sink, where we are bootstrapping software as a service. The previous episode revealed that the budget forecast numbers adds up and the market for software cost estimation tool is promising. What are the next steps when you are creating, when you are bootstrapping software as a service? The next step would be to define your product. When I'm helping other people to create a product for them, they usually come to me with a very brief description of their core value proposition of their product and they're focusing more on additional features like user registration or email messaging. The reason for this, in my opinion, is that it's very easy to describe something that you know because user registration forms are all over the place and everybody is familiar with that. But when you're defining a new set of features, it's very difficult to imagine how that would work. It requires creativity and it's not that easy as it might be at the first glance when you're thinking about this. So the next step to define your product would be to create a description of the product you want to create. There are a couple of uh, ways, a couple of paths you can take to describe your product. For example, you can create uh, mockups, uh, wireframes, that make a visual representation of your product, how it will work. The second would be to create uh, user stories. User stories usually describe the outcome of user actions. And the third thing would be to describe the list of features, what user, what user see on, or what user can do on a particular uh, screen of user interface. So regardless the path you will take, you have to do this in detail. I mean like literally very detailed, uh, either a description of user interface or description of user stories or a set of features. The more details you will add, the better for your developers to understand what you actually want to create. And don't focus on additional features or don't go beyond your key value proposition. Focus mainly on key value proposition. The other thing is that you have to remember that adds a complexity to a product is a business logic. The business logic is usually one third of the MVP. It's very complex, but at this level, when you're creating your product, you're creating the proof of concept of your product, you don't have to think and you don't have to worry about business logic. You can add this slide later on, but be aware that, beware that it will take one of the third of the time to create a proper business logic because it's it's not that easy it's not that people are paying for your uh, subscription and they are using it the business logic describes everything from onboarding the user the user paying the subscription but also it covers the cases like user cancels the subscription or user applies the coupon or a discount you may ask what is the reason to spend that much effort on describing something that will eventually change because when bootstrapping, the change is written in that mode. The reason is simply this. Your key value proposition won't change that much over time. You can make a pivot, but the key value proposition probably won't change that much, so your, your the description, your documentation won't uh, apply anymore. The second reason is that your developers must exactly know what they are creating, so they can create a solid structure so they can create on the top of it. And the final reason, the better describe your product, the more accurate quote from your development team you'll get, how much time and how much money you'll need to spend on creating something like that. And the final reason would be that it's easier to make changes on paper. If you create a project description and you'll consult this with various people, like project managers, developers, or your potential customers, they will tell that, okay, that's, that's not something that will work or this has to be made different. So it's very easy to copy paste or delete or add some extra features on the paper rather than asking developers to add an extra feature and completely change the structure he planned. So defining the product on paper is very important even though you know that it will change in the future. So how I'm going to approach this in my software cost estimation tool? I'm usually starting with functional requirements documentation because it's very nice and very easy way to describe a product. So what I'll do, I'll define the features that user will have, like creating a new estimation, approving new estimation and stuff like that. 
plus I will add a description of non-functional requirements. And non-functional requirements are everything that happens in the background, like sending a reminder about unapproved estimation or things like that. In addition, I think I will describe a transition when it comes to estimation, because the estimation here is the core of the product. So there will be a lot of things that can happen to estimation. So probably I'll create a diagram that describes what happens with estimation when the user approves it, or when the client approves it, or when the client rejects an estimation. And with this functional requirements documentation, I'll be in a position to quickly create a wireframes, uh, initial version of UX mockup, which then I'll pass to UX designer so he can improve this user experience. What I'm not going to do is that I'm not going to focus on technology stack or anything related with technologies that will be used to create that product, because this is in favor of the development team that will implement this product. So when you create a product documentation, don't think about what technology will be used. N Unless you do a technology specific product, then of course you need to use a particular technology and it will be defining your product in some way. But in my case, and I think in most of software as a services, the technology is abstract layer of your product definition. So under this video, you will find a link to the documentation that I'll create for my product. You can inspire yourself and see how I'm doing this. And if you need a help with defining your product, you can always ping me and I'll try to help you with defining your product. So see you in next episode where I'll talk about things that you have to do and, or you have to worry about where, when your product is being implemented by the development team and you have this feeling that you, know, you can put your hands in a pocket and just wait for the product to come. But there's a lot of things to do in the meantime. See you next video.